Welcome back to Guide to Pen Testing. In this episode, we're going to be covering some basic usage of Metasploit. The only virtual machine we're going to need running for this episode is our Kali virtual machine. So as previously, let's just start off by logging into this virtual machine. So once we're logged in, we're going to start a terminal. And I'm just going to increase the font size here for you. So once we're in our terminal, all we need to do to start the Metasploit console is type msf console. It does tend to take a little while to start up, but it will start up, just have some patience. So now that Metasploit started up, let's quickly do db underscore status. So it's saying we don't have a database connection, and why this is really important is if you don't have the database started in the background of Metasploit, if you try and run any searches through the exploits or anything like that, it'll take a very long time because it's going to have to individually go through each exploit file to find out if it's one you're searching for. So let's exit back out of MSF console and let's set up the database. So I've just cleared my screen now. So what we're going to need to do first is do service post grass ql start. Let's try and type service correctly. So now that the Postgres service is started, let's also start the msfdb service. And then let's also initialize it because we haven't done this before. So it's msd msfdb in it. What this is going to do, it's going to automatically configure our Metasploit installation to use the database that we've just started. So with all that started up, we should be able to do msf console once again, and we're going to run the same db status command once it starts up, which should show us that we're now connected. So now it's started up, let's see if our db status command says that we're connected. So we've been successful, we're now connected to the database. So we will be able to run searches at full speed, no problem. So now that we've set up the database for searches, let's run one. One of the most common reasons you're going to use search is to look for an exploit. So let's use one of my personal favorites and let's search for MS. So the command is search and we're going to search for MS08-067. So the database cache isn't built yet because we've only just initialized it. What you will notice is once it gets completely built, we will not have any problems doing any searches really, really quickly. So as you can see here, our search has come back successfully and we've found the exploit that we want to use. So in Metasploit, it's fairly intuitive to use any kind of module, be that an exploit or an auxiliary module. What we need want to do is copy this path here and then simply type use followed by that path that we just copied. So as you can see here, the shell changes slightly so that we know that we've got an exploit selected. So MSF exploit and then the name of the exploit we have selected. So what we'd have to do now is edit the configuration of this to enter our target and what we want to come back. So let's do show options. This can actually now just be shortened to options. So that's what I'm gonna do. And it's going to show us the default options for this module. So we have an option to use proxies. So if, for example, we were using some kind of reverse proxy into the network, we'd be able to perform these tasks from a different hop away from the user. We also have the R host, which is the remote host, which, as it says here right in the description, is the target address. We have the R port, which is the SMB service port. 99% of the time, especially with this, this exploit, this isn't going to change. But if you actually run into a situation where, for example, they're doing some um, port forwarding on their router, and for whatever reason they want to get their Windows XP machine's SMB service out on the internet, they may actually change this to a different port on the router. And this is the SMB pipe that it's going to use. We're not covering this video because this is just a basic demonstration of how to use Metasploit and how to navigate around it. There's one other option which is hidden here, and that's setting a payload. 
A payload is what you want to run if the exploit is successful, and a lot of the times, especially with these Windows exploits and a lot, now, a lot more now with Linux systems and web based systems, we're going to want to use a meterpreter shell. So let's set a payload on this exploit, even though we're not going to be attacking anything, let's set a payload on this exploit just to see what that looks like. So this is another quite intuitive feature of Metasploit. If you do set and then any of these names here or any that we know, so I'm going to type set payload and you don't actually have to capitalize this, but it's good practice to do so, but I apparently don't follow good practice. And then we need to type in a location of a payload. So for this, I'm going to use Windows. So you've kind of got to keep the directory structure here in mind. It goes operating system. And then if I do a double, double tab, there's a hundred and whatever different possibilities. But we've got Windows, DLL injects or whatever. But we know we want a interpreter. So let's start typing interpreter and hit tab and that'll auto complete. Let's do a double tab again. And we can see all the different interpreter shells we have to choose from. On an actual pen test, we're going to be using one of these two, really. Um, we're going to be using HTTPS because if we're potentially pulling down sensitive customer information, we definitely want to do that over a secure medium. And we're going to use a reverse connection because we don't know what kind of protection this server's behind. We don't know if it's behind a firewall where if we open a bind port where we want to go ahead and connect to this system, uh, we have no way of knowing if this will actually open up. And some of these exploits are kind of one-shot wonders. If you run it and you're not successful, it's very unlikely it's going to work again. So we're going to use a reverse connection because it's much more likely that they're not going to be doing any egress filtering. Egress filtering is when a firewall is configured to not only stop inbound connections, but also stop certain types of outbound connections. A good egress filtering policy would only allow maybe 80, port 80 and port 443 out, which are um, HTTP and HTTPS. They may also allow DNS out, but a lot of bigger companies have internal DNS servers. But reverse payloads, if there's no type of egress filtering, will allow the system to call out to us and we don't have to deal with any port, not, port forwarding problems. So let's go ahead and select this reverse HTTPS payload. So that says now that payload is set to what we just set. So let's do show options now. We can see now that we have our previous options minus the proxies. And we also have now payload options. And this is where we set our L host and L port. If this is a dedicated machine for pen testing and it does have an external IP address, in here you'd set the L host of your external IP address. You've got to think about your local address from the perspective of your target machine. So if they could only see you from a public IP of whatever it may be, that's what you need to enter here. In LPort, I recommend using something which isn't going to raise much suspicion. So as we know, this is a HTTPS connection. So by default, it's 8443, but I recommend shorting this down to 443. This is only, of course, if this is a dedicated system and you have the ability to open port 443. And the LURI is the HTTP path. By default, this won't use one bit. This could be used to make it look a li little bit more legitimate. So you could change the LURL to slash login. So anyone who was actually looking at the connection between you and the target machine would just see them going to this login page or for example, if you did a slash keep alive or anything like that, anything not to raise suspicion is what you'd put here. So Metasploit has hundreds, if not thousands of different, different exploits already included within it. And I thought I'd just cover how I actually got what I wanted to search there, the MS080067. If you watch back in this video series, Aaron covers how to use Nessus. And if you check on the right hand side of one of the vulnerabilities that it may show up, on the right hand side it'll say whether there's an exploit available within Metasploit. And if so, you'll be able to search either the CVE number or the MS number and it should show up in Metasploit using the search function that we showed before. Aside from exploits, Metasploit has a whole bunch of different auxiliary modules and post modules. Post modules are what we'd run after we've got a shell on the system. So if we wanted to exfiltrate passwords, uh, pivot through the system, these are all examples of post exploitation. So if we do use auxiliary, 
and let's double tab again. There's 914 different possibilities. So let's have a look through some of these. So we have admin, lots of different admin. And these are all, as you can see here, D-Link DR645. Uh, and to my knowledge, that's a rumor. So there's all different types of these auxiliary modules. And this could be... This could be an exploit module, but it's just put in the auxiliary folder because exploiting a router may not be as useful to a penetration tester as you may believe. So I scroll down a little bit further here and there's all kinds of denial of service modules. And these are kind of exploits which won't give you a shell, but if you are testing for denial of service, which a lot of the time you won't be on a penetration test just because you don't want to interrupt the service of the customer, these modules could be used to essentially prevent access to a system. And they have all different kinds of uh, modules and different problems here. And there's a bunch of Windows ones and Wireshark and, and all that kind of stuff. We also have some fuzzes in here, and this is for testing against custom implementations of things. Uh, we have Gava, which is what we actually end up using the most. So let's go ahead and use the Gava modules. Let's do a double tab again, and we'll see a whole different a whole different number of exploits in here. And we start seeing things for Joomla, which is CMS. We have WordPress plugin uh, exploits here. And we could also do, right here, we can do an SSL lab scan, all from within Metasploit. I should also mention that when we started the database earlier in the video, any information we gather with any of these will be automatically stored within our database so we can use it later. So we can still go ahead and copy and paste any of this stuff into a text file and I actually recommend you do that because it's really good to take notes and refer to them later. But the database should take care of most things that we want to save. So we're going to go for use auxiliary scanner, HTTP, WordPress and let's do a double tab and we can see here that we've got a whole different set of options. And what I personally love is this login enum. So let's use that and as you can see at the bottom we've changed to an auxiliary module and it's got in red what our auxiliary module is so we know exactly where we are within Metasploit. Show options we can see a whole different number of things here and the descriptions really do help a lot because they're all written by the developer of the individual module so they tend to be quite informative about what you need to put in here. I'm not going to go through each one of these but you can see how reusable all of the syntax within Metasploit is. It's all a matter of remembering how to use, search and run. So let's just go ahead and say that this is, we've got everything here filled out exactly how we want it to. Obviously it's not filled out, but how would we go ahead and run this? So you can either go ahead and type exploit and that'll run. And it's going to say failed because I've not put any remote hosts in. But I'd like to show them that to just run. And that works with any of the modules here. If you type run, it'll go. If you type exploit, it'll run. It's fine. 